Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video. You say, you know, why is it when you try to say anything, you know, nobody don't want to hear nothing about the PNP. They just want to hear everything about JLP. And what you're trying to do is to just make sure, say, our country that we love, you know, move on so good. Man, I really tell my brethren, yeah, give me a call so we can get a look of five minute talk because, you know, I don't know long. I don't have no experience that you may learn from. Yes, so, uh, you know, that is one of our loyal viewers and subscribers at the Jamaica Young Police Channel. You know, sharing the stats, you know, about the attacks here from the, from the PMP criminal organization supporters, yeah. And, you know, I have most of my friends, um, I can tell you, most of my friends, them and, you know, every relative there, you yeah, understand, them subscribe to the PMP criminal organization. Some of them still live in like Kingston 12, Jungle and Jonestown. They still live there. Still have the same mindset, you yeah, understand? And, yeah, and enough of them vexed with me in time attack, because, and guess why? It's not like, me a lie, you know. When them vex me, I talk the truth. Yeah, they must say, boy, you understand what I'm saying? But you see me, you know, I am totally different, you know. Yeah, man, I have a conscience. You understand? I have a conscience. And so, what I tell you, sir? Why? I'm not even this is all. So, we appreciate the call. So, we appreciate this, um, that call. That man not leave his, um, vi you know, his voice message. But that is, look here, you see, you as loyal viewers and subscribers, you see, if that's the easiest way, you know, if you want us to return your call, if you call us and don't get us, yeah, you leave a message and detailed message and we call it. But you see, if you call and you miss, and miss your call and you don't leave the message, we don't see it as spam. So we don't call you on them things, you understand? I tell you. So, yeah, um, so moving on. So to the video, yeah, so you know, we do a video about um, Dudus last week. Yeah, um, you know, how he was set up by his brother, Liberty, and because Liberty hated him. And, you know, it's been rumored that um, Dudus was adopted, that he's not Jim Brown's son. Yeah, so we, um, there's a man um, who born and raised in Rosetown. Yes. And, yeah, and this man, he knew Jim Brown before Jim Brown became a... Um, start say in my labor rights so back then in Rosetown, Rosetown was a PMP community mm. and Jim Brown when the PMP was going around then um, in a Rosetown, it was on the party pan yeah the Jewish party pan that's the only bus that could enter that community because you know the jolly bus them were too long and Jim Brown young man uh, Jim Brown believed in a hard work Jim Brown believed in a Social, him not believe in a handout and begging. So when the PMP they were going around then issuing guns and money, Jim Brown didn't take any. Him say no one, him none of them thing there. And you understand? And him never subscribed to that kind of lifestyle. Cause he was in him trade. And guess what? Same PMP them were born and grow and them shot him up five times. As a man from Tivoli Gardens, yeah, everybody just look upon him and them just appear for him dead. The youth in him was a teenager. Yeah, this is a man that grew up with him. Um, uh, you're not going to hear, well, maybe I might let you hear a part of the conversation that we have. Because this is a man, you know, them used to live in a same yard. And after them shut up Jim Brown, and yeah, and him got a Tivoli and them help him down a clinic. I saw him come back as a labor, I saw him come back as a labor, right? And all of the man, they shot him, him killed him. 
And I saw now Rose Town become a stronghold now for the labour right then because of Jim Brown. As a youth, you know, because he used to play all ball and football and them things there. And he's a man that believed him was in any badness until them try to kill him. All because him, him not as, he not the same kind of thinking as them. So, before moving further, why oh, don't you listen to what this loyal viewers and, and loyal viewer and subscriber call the channel and say to the Jamaica Young Police channel because hey look, you have to understand this channel, you know, it's not about us, you know, it's about it's not about us here at the Jamaica Young Police, it's all about all of us. Yeah, you the viewers and the subscribers, because you are the one that you are the ones why this channel is where it's at. And we're not gonna change for anyone because look. For all of the, we have lost over 6,000 subscribers, you know, all because we're not, we're not, we do not subscribe for telling the lies, especially for um, any political party. And you know how which one, because you know which one we were born and raised. So we're not come from the, we're not come from the labor rights community. But we, we're not born and raised in a Tifali Arima. You understand? So we, yeah, we, the reason why we love Edward Siaga is security, yeah, man. And we join the police force and we come see it for ourselves. So why don't you listen to this viewer and subscriber, you know? Yeah, and we applaud them, so we have to give them some strength and them call because these are the people that motivate us and make us want to do more work. You understand? Yes. So you watch, you listen, you decide. And we'll come back to you. Come on, I listen to your program, man. I find it interesting, man. You'll be here as I reach in the night time. If I see you up on YouTube, man, you come like say. <laughs> like say, if you just pull on the phone, you know? For real? Yeah, man. I enjoy your program, man. Mm. I enjoy your program, man. You know? Mm. So, so what, you love yeah. about, what you love about the program? Everything where you talk about, everything where you say about it, man. So, I, mean, I believe in, in the things where you say. I mean, I know say the truth you talk, you know? Yeah, man. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Well, because yeah, we, just, we just want back to country, that's all we do. Yeah. We want it back from them, you know? Yeah, man, yeah, true. Yeah. And we know, know. We, know who, we know who are the corruptors, them, you know? And I look yeah. at and I look at them yeah. and I fire a gun, you know? Yeah. Mm. That's, that's one of the main reasons, you know, the, the motivation, especially from that caller, that man, you know, that tell us, he knows who are the corruptors. So in time we attack, we know say it's not the little guy. And I look at guy, them on the street, you have fire gun or corruptors. And the same 63 people in a parliament. So in time we are tell people that and them things are, oh boy, you are labor right and this and that. No, we are telling you the truth. You have a two you have a political party and you have a you have a criminal organization in a parliament. And the people them, yeah, the people them with the criminal organization, them don't like the truth. May I tell you straight up. Born and raised around them and right through them life. All them do is them good. One thing I can tell you about them. They are very good at propaganda and lies. Yeah, and when we say that, we say to Tony, any apologies. The labor they are not good at lies as does them. The labor they are not good. I can tell you that. I see it even when I was a police officer. The labor they are not good at lying. The PMP, them, yeah, that's in a, that's a genetics. Yeah, man, I tell you, straight up. So, as you, you know, we know uh, people like Delroy Chuck and the Mark Gold in them, and the, entire, the, the PMP is a criminal organization. And as we stated, and we said it already before, that yeah, 98% are, are this away somebody from correctional service in a contact us and tell us. Yeah, they might, yeah, hear them say, boy, boy, the data we have it wrong. That's how them tell me. So we just go with it. It's an immunity. Yeah, the person, you know, was not um, by law. They not supposed to even attack with somebody outside and them things. But you know, same time people trust you and them tell you things. You just have to just share it with others. So that's what we are doing. We share it with you, our loyal viewers and subscribers. Yeah, so I'm saying 98% of the people them in a prison at Jamaica, they are all PMP supporters. So something is definitely wrong with the PMP, the PMP criminal organization. Because if 98%, that means you have to say the entire prison population, they are PMP supporters. So that means the PMP criminal organization is doing something wrong. They must do something different. You understand? Yes, I just saw you Why dear people after they just involve indulging in criminality? It's just wrong. Something is definitely wrong there. So them need for you know do something. That's why we at the Jamaica Young Police Center because yeah, we have people you know where them life get ruined because of these people, you know. Yeah man, we are tell you. Because I just saw it. You understand? You know, so we just I always say we just walk back with Jamaica. Yeah, that's it. You know, we, nothing else. We just want Jamaica based on 
one and two little things, you know. And we now stop fight for it, you know, until it, you know, it materialize. If I even, even in time we're gone, because we know who are the corruptors in Jamaica. Yeah, so, yeah, we have spoken to a man, yeah, man, on the phone, yeah. Um, you're going to hear, you're going to hear, um, you're going to hear him. Yes, um, they used to live in the same yard in Rosetown, and they call um, Jim Brown Babai. Yes, but you know, some people, it's not everyone like the upfront thing and one and two local things. So he knew, as I said to you, I told you guys earlier. So this man, you know, who knew Jim Brown, yeah, that is Lester, um, you know, Lester, Lester Cook. Yeah, he says that Dudus is more Cook than the other children, and he was not adopted. And it's a lie started by one of one of Jim Brown's baby mothers. So today I want to share the untold story of Jim Brown and the rise of Christopher Duda Squawk. So this is, yeah, this is a man, this is a man I grew up with. Um, so if Jim Brown was alive to the day, he would be in his 70s. Yeah, you understand? So this is what he said. He said, um, yeah, so he said, um, Jim Brown believed in hard work and treating others fairly. We are telling a man say, you know, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, because you have some criminal them have them own code of ethics. And them treat people where them love good because so criminal be operating. You know. Yeah, and Jim Brown was never convicted of a crime. So you can legally like 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 all ninja man now. If Jim Brown was alive, I could not use the words of Jim Brown a criminal. Cause I'm never convicted for a crime and Jim and Jim Brown could have sued me and legally get money. You understand? The only thing I could have said that he was arrested and charged with you know, murder and them thing there, and yeah, when him kill the boss man, stab him and kill him and them thing there, and police couldn't, police nothing, lock him up, them get warrant from a DPP. Yeah, them have a rule. Uh, Jim Brown was claiming self defense. And yeah, man, and hey, may I tell you, most of you not even know, and back then, when them arrest and charge Jim Brown for the murder of the boss man, them may get you to go to school, you know, they mount a gunshot with the man, them fire, you know, Tivoli man, them fire. You know. Um, down by the courthouse in the Supreme Court, the judge of the Ida and the Dex, you know. So you, you understand? Yeah. So we try to see if we can all find them foot in the car. The man they did crab up bad in them and the dangerous in the man. Yeah, man. And the jury, them let him go. Like Jim Brown, that yeah, man, he may charge to stab a bus man and kill him. Yeah, man, near to. Then them turn police station to, you know. You understand? So we, yeah, we all hear yeah, the story about, about, about it and you understand what I'm saying? But today that is not about with Jim Brown. And we have so many stories we can tell you about with Jim Brown because we have spoken to so many people that knew him. Yeah, I understand. And the reason being why people can't talk with is just that, you see, they said that boy, we fear, we're not biased because we burn, we burn fire, we wicked upon the labor right them and the PMP them and them. That's why them say, yeah, you know, we like you, you know, Mr. Porter. Yeah, we like you as a junglist and them thing they call your fear. You know, stay like, like other people who just lie, no, you know, you know that. That's why they don't like you. I said, boy, we like you still doing, although you're a junglist. Yeah, so can you believe the labor at them show me more love than my own people because I speak the truth. So I just saw it go. You understand? So he said, yeah, he said, Jim Brown, yeah, man, Jim Brown, yeah, man, he said, I live in the same yard as Lester, Jim Brown, Coke. And got to know him well. We were neighbors and I even knew where he hid his guns in Rosetown under the cellar. Yeah, so Jim Brown used to hide the man said sometime he'd go and hide. And that the man that was PMP, you know. You understand? Him did leave and came out, although you know him and Jim Brown live in I see him yard. So what happened then back then, you know, him said, Jim Brown, did, um, when he come onto his cellar, because the cellar now, you know, it have you can go on a cellar and creep and crawl and reach up to a certain section of the cellar. But when you reach a certain section, only like a little youth can really go further. So, ah, this is now Jim Brown hide him gun them. So, I said Jim Brown hide the gun them on him cellar and him use nail. The, 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 the flooring, him use nail and nail it down. And then he would have put, um, would have said, um, a mat, but them, yeah, a mat and cover that here already. I make certain say the red oak and all them things that the um, genie floor polish would have covered it, cover the nail them. So if police come, they're not going to find it or anything. But police never come and read for me. 
Because him say, them call him Babai. Because him say, boy, Babai was a respected man in a community at Rostown. Because I see him PMP them and them shot him up five times. All because him say, no one no gun from nobody and him no one no money. Because at the time, him not work um, in a West Street area. You understand? And him used to play him football and yeah, yeah, got hear it. So this, uh, this man I said, no, say, um, I lie to Mattel, say, um, Dudu son, uh, Jim Brown, biological son. You understand? This is a man who say, yeah, a long Baba, a Baba. So them call, I nothing did know, so them call um, Jim Brown Baba until I talk to this man. And then I talk to, um, I talk to some police, talk to a police officer and, and another man who know them good and them confirm me. Say, yes, I saw so them used to call him for real Baba. Yeah. And them same did serious. But he was always a leader. So the man said, Jim Brown was a man who believed in hard work and not depending on the government for anything. Because of this, some community members start his philosophy aligned with the, P the JLP party and Edward Siaga. So because of that now, in a PMP, because Rostown was PMP at the time. And the man, the man Jim Brown grew up together and, thing, and the man said, boy, because Jim Brown don't believe in him. Yeah, so... Jim Brown don't believe enough in a man go out there and rob no people. So that's why you see him son them now. The man said, that's why you see him son them. Do the son them man you now. That's why they did have that tight lockdown in a Tivoli Gardens and its environment. Nobody can rob nobody and anything because I baba them get it from. Jim Brown, Jim Brown, uh, that, that type of thing where Jim Brown ate with PMP, so them love rob people and all kind of something. You understand? So he never did like them thing. They them believe in a hard work and them thing. There. You understand? Yeah, so I saw him rise up in our ranks in our criminality because um, Dudu's mother, yeah, Jim Brown and I are used to there for real as him say. But him say, what happened is that some, um, yeah, you know, people stay, hey, Jamaican are some dangerous people, you know. So him say, what happened on them thing after Jim Brown, uh, you know, after Jim Brown died, that's how the people they start to say Dudu's because of all them kids, you know. The two brightest was Dudus and Jati. Bright. The two of them bright and the two of them, them shy. That um, Babai, I saw him did stay to Jim Brown did shy, you know. At them because uh, them shot him up five times. Like the man says like it's like them just turn on something in you know, a man. He said the man just get. He said Jim Brown was a man who was fearless from this from this. Uh, Cause he said people them actively, you know, them bring him back to health. And the man says, like, the man, them, he come like, they just wake up something, you know, man. He said, the man just get cold. Because he said, Baba, was a man who just love playing football and all them things there. You understand? And the man, they, you know, him, hey, may I tell you, you listen to the man, man. But, you, you know, you soon hear it. You soon hear it. But I don't think I'll let you hear it now, today, in this video. We just talk about, what am I tell you about Dudus? Say so Dudus are Jim Brown biological son. Jim Brown is an adopted kid. Lie. You understand? So that's why, yeah, you know, a big man, this is you know, a man when I'm 70. The man, Baba, he grew together. He live all America now and him thing there. You understand? I'm not going to call him name. Yeah, you know, see, but as much as, but he must, although he man, after everything with Jim, after Jim Brown, he get shut up and him still there. Because Jim Brown, all on him, you know. Because him say, he used to go on the cellar, you know. And three, Jim Brown used to have three guns, you know. He used to have a spin barrel. And two matic in you know, a German Logan and an ex gun and him have all him box a shot them and them thing there. And him say sometimes him go on the two gun missing, sometimes one. You understand? And one day him just said to him, say, boy, bye bye. Hey, me know which way you keep your gun them, you know. And him say, Jim Brown say, hey boy, who you tell? Him say you don't tell nobody, him say, he that keep it his mouth, keep it his life. Don't tell nobody nothing about my business, you know. You understand? So yeah, you know, see. So eventually him you know, later because uh, you don't know if I'm on a PMP and them thing then the community become labor, right? Yeah, him did leave and from the community and go live a country and you know, I'll come back this way and them thing and him end up round a mile road. Yeah. Well, I tell you about how someone who are bigger this time or I mean, nothing did know. So, moving on. You understand? So, so the, yeah, so them shot, them shot Baba about five times, almost killing him. I almost kill him, kill him. It was a GLP supporter who found him bleeding in the gutter water and saved his life. I saw him become labor right. He never, he never had, 
you understand, in bank called Rose Town House, PMP community. So when Jim Brown recovered, he was bitter towards the PMP party supporters who had shot him. Before the incident, he was not involved in any political party and was a humble, quiet and hard-working young man. So him saying have the same trait as, as Dodos and Jati, quiet. They don't like the attention, but they get it and them thing. And him, him man said, boy, for a long time, if Jim Brown, if you and Jim Brown even sit down and want to play a load and them thing, just in presence alone, you can't know. So him say, boy, people always say something about the brother here. Yeah. yeah, you understand? I just saw it go. So, he, you know, a man said Jim Brown wasn't interested in the violence and that was sweeping through the communities in Kingston. The notion that Christopher Dudos Coke was adapting is blasph blasphemous. Jim Brown loved Dudos as his son and saw him as his favorite son after his eldest son, Jati. Dudos, a peacemaker, who reminded Jim Brown of himself growing up. So that's why I love Dodo so much because he said, this old man said, oh, Jim Brown, can you man Jim Brown a friend? You know? go you both all one twin, a twin, a god. So why may I tell you, hey, that's why you see in a life, just to go down, God will follow you. You hear you both even a twin and them thing there. You know, but later you hear all about that. So, yeah, so the man said, you know, um, Jim Brown tell him, say, boy, you know, Dodo's remind him of him growing up. So the people who painted Dudos as adopted are the ones with ulterior motives. They spread lies to discredit him. The Quark family's reign in Tivoli Garden was dominant for many years before it was toppled. But Jim Brown wasn't always the combative gunslinger. He was reputed to be. He was just a regular Jamaican youth working hard and trying to make something of his life. The introduction of politics into the community changed everything. Jim Brown pals remember how friendly and amicable the youths were before the parties came with their agendas. Jim Brown's transformation into a leader came after he was attacked. He took up arms and became the leader of Tivoli Gardens. With the demise of Jim Brown and his heir apparent Dudus took over causing tension with his brother Liberty. The Coke Empire eventually crumbled under the pressure of the U.S. extradition request and the unprecedented clampdown by the security force. It marks the end of an era filled with diplomatic impasse and political scandal. Yes, yeah, so if you reach this far of watching the Jamaica Young Police channel, you know, untold story of Jim Brown and the rise of Dulles. Yeah, man, subscribe to our, our channel for more videos like this. Yeah, man, select the notification bell and select all so that whenever you at the Jamaica Young Police channel receive the notification in time the video release, you'll be one of the first viewer and subscriber to get them. Yes, and give the video a thumbs up. Share the video, share the video with a friend, your neighbor, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and tell a friend for tell a friend for years. So subscribe to the Jamaica Young Police channel because you know we over here, we do not like criminals. We hate them with a passion. Yeah, and we are law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law. Yeah, man. And we love the police, but we don't love the thief in police them. Yes. So, moving on. So, yeah, man. So, he said, you know, list, um, so he, this man said, so even you wish by Jim Brown, it is gone. And, uh, you know, a seller in our store where they live in the same yard. So, Jim Brown was a man who believed in the hard work. He said that, uh, you understand? And some men in the community who supported the PMP party then said that, because him philosophy aligned with Edward Siaga, them shot him. You understand? So can you believe that it was GLP supporter who saw him bleeding and a labor right them save him? I saw him become labor right. You know, so a PMP cause them thing there. You understand? So some, some people even went as far to say that there was no sh no short people. Yeah, you hear them say hear them say them. So them say him man say bye bye, bye bye worship do the smother like an angel. None of his women had the lady-like title as Dodo's mother. And that's where the jealousy came from. Okay, so Dodo, I said, boy, I said, Dodo's mother. Dodo's mother was the he and as she of the lady-like title. So that's why the others, them, them yeah, because the whole of them, every woman want like, Baba in her, but him choose who him sleep with and them thing there. And she had the one who have a lady-like title. Because I uh, move her now from Roston. And now from Rima and bring her come down to Tivoli. 
You understand? Because she never have come from Tivoli. So, yeah. So some even went as far that there were no short people in his family after he died. And Jim Brown's biological mother was short and not tall. So he saw people say, this is where I'm at. This car, this is a man I know Jim Brown, because them grew together. So he said the reason, the jealousy towards Jim Brown is because Jim Brown, Jati and the other coke children have an affinity for Dudos, Dudos because Jim Brown said that he was the smartest after Jati because he was not your obnoxious, belligerent, loud, impulsive and attitude youth. He was more a peacemaker who thinks before he speaks, unlike liberty. Ask anyone who knew Jim Brown. They will tell you that Dudus was his favorite son after Jati because Dudus reminded him, him of himself growing up and being humble. So those who are trying to make Christopher Dudus cook and an adopted son are the rapists, robbers and the ones who want to violate the people who live in the Valley Gardens because everyone knows that live up liberty was a rapist. It's Dudus why the women in Valley Gardens had protection because of him and not liberty. That's why the women in Tivoli Gardens and the elders love Dudus. Dudus was never adopted. It's a lie started by one of Jim Brown's baby mothers. And the man said no one called the name because he did no one stir no anger. But I just have to make, this, uh, make the record straight. So the much fear Coke Empire reigned supreme in Tivoli Gardens for about a quarter century before it was stopped at the time when the second generation leadership seemed to have been at its most dominant. So Lester, Lester, Light Cork, alias Jim Brown, the architect, architect of the dynasty, was not always a combative gunslinger of the West Kingston. He was reported to be in the years leading to, up to his death. In a classic dramatic irony, as it emerged in recent weeks, the turnaround for Jim Brown came in 1966, the same year, the political warfare ushered a state of emergency in Western Kingston. Jim Brown, then in his late teens, was shot multiple times. One Sunday after politics came into the community and the guy started to gravitate to either PMP, People's National Party or GLP, Jamaica Labour Party. E. Jim Brown was shot by some gunmen. He got about five shots and fell into the gutter water. A childhood friend of Jim Brown said, Everyone was so scared to assist him until someone rode up on a bike, held him and brought him to the era now called Tivoli, where medical professionals treated him at the health facility and brought him back to good health. When Jim Brown re-emerged, he returned as a bad man. So when I call him, we just I said Daddy B, when I call him and last year, recall, that is when everything changed. At the time he was shot, Jim Brown was making something of his life. He was a regular Jamaican youth, not an idler. He worked hard because he was an apprentice to a locksmith by the name of Miller in a shop between Regent Street and Chestnut Lake. This was Quark's um, childhood pal. At the time, there were numerous genuine businesses in the art of the community. You had good mechanic shops and good lumber yard. A turn for the worse. Quark did not die, but the experience would have a far-reaching life-altering effect on him. It was another state of emergency that would declare 44 years later to capture Jim Brown's son, Christopher, better known as the President Ardudus, who had succeeded him as Tivoli informal monarch following the Patriarch tragedy, tragic death in 1992. But like father, son would run into trouble with the United States and gun and drug trafficking allegation. This man who spent his youthful days in Western Kingston recalled, recalled that a novel brand of violence was ushered by a fierce wave of politics into the region. Jim Brown's pal remember him as a good footballer, with whom yeah man, the youth then play regularly in Denanton. At the time, Tivoli Gardens had not yet take shape and the centre of Western Kingston was Denanton. I still can't believe that him, Jim Brown, Babai, just changed like that, still seeming to be in the state of mild surprise. So him some more than 50 years after they walked the streets together. At the time, Jim Brown had another name, Babai. He said while, while the well-built cook could defend himself in a fight, he was never an aggressor. So that's the reason why the man said he loved um, Dudos, because Dudos quiet. 
the, the, those wasn't the kind of person where they start problems. So. so all this change the day, Dimbrow Brown was attacked. The man, um, Daddy B, fully remember how when he left high school and got a job, yeah, Jim Brown would advise him not to be a victim of rough tackling footballers during a Sunday evening game. Now make them, now make them argue you that prevent you from not do, going to work by injuring you. Brown reportedly warned him. Political poison at the time, Jim Brown and most youth live in and around Denantown, but went into the area that later became Tivoli Gardens to participate in sporting activities. Then politics intruded and disrupted it. Recall that it be that even an active youth club was transformed into a veritable political football. That is the root cause of the changes in the community regarding the political incursion. Because youths who were friendly, who had amicable relationships throughout, changed when the parties came with their agendas. He said that Jim Brown would help to lead the team constructively when they ventured out of Western Kingston to play for other teams. When Jim Brown allegedly took up arms, he was not the frontline man in Tivoli Gardens. There were prominent people like Claudius, Claudia Massop and Carl Bayer Mitchell who were on the front line, but eventually he emerged as a leader of Tivoli Gardens. As time passed, Jim Brown took unto himself a family and sent his children to prominent high schools. His eldest son, Mark Anthony Cook, and our affectionately known as Jati, went to Woolmer's Boys School, while Leighton, otherwise called Liberty, attended Excelsior. Dudus went to Arden. Haunted by violence and death, even when Dim Brown rolled Tivoli Gardens with an iron hand, his children were never known to be troublemakers in school. The lives of the Coke family members changed again, dramatically at one fateful Sunday morning in 1992. The scene of Coke was behind bars, locked up at the high security Tower Street Adult Correctional Centre after losing an extradition battle to the United States of America when news brought that Jati his heir apparent had been killed. Jati was riding along Maxi Avenue, St. Andrew on a motorcycle when he was attacked. The reprisal were swift and vicious. Police said at least 12 persons were killed within two weeks. In February 1992, on the afternoon of Jati was being buried, another tragedy hit the Coke family. Jim Brown died in a mysterious fire in his cell with the demise of the father and, and, and heir apparent Dodos son was chosen to lead Tivoli Gardens over liberty to, lot, lot to the latter's displeasure. A truce was forged between the two living sons and Dudus reign with a mighty that had sweeping reach until U.S. intervened with his extradition request. The Coke Empire has crumbled nearly a year after the Diplomatic impasse, political scandal, and president clapped down by the security forces. Time will tell if it will be buried forever. So the thing is that now, after the Tivoli incursion and Dodos and Liberty have them disagreement, the, um, what is said you know, is that the reason if Dodos Based on the information received and obtained, if Dudos had listened to Justin O'Givley, yeah, Justin, so many, near, um, over 100 people wouldn't lose their life because he was the one that was telling him that just go on and him thing there and try to see if you can make a deal. Okay? You understand? They know that everything that the American was saying is true, although it, they went about it illegally. And Justin was telling him. That, we are telling you, know, Justin O'Givley was telling Dudus that he should not um, put up any resistance with the extradition. It was Liberty and others that was telling him about, um, telling him all kind of nonsense. Justin and him, Justin and him, one of his son was trying to talk sense into him. Desmond Mackenzie tried to talk sense into him. Siaga sent message and talk and tell him. Siago send message to him and tell him, say, you can't beat America. So you better you go on. But because he wanted to, he, Dudos wanted 
his name to be etched as the real Makai according to them. That's the reason why he was able to assemble all these men. But he was not there fighting. He was in the community when everything started. Because the drones up there pick him up. And when all, all breaks start, when shot them start fire, them usher him out. It, it usher him out at Tivoli Gardens. Yes. And he went through um, Anatown and um, through No Man's Land. Went to um, Fletcher's Land. Police, you know, a known police, big police, yeah, man. And whenever I say a bigger food. And then, yeah, from, from Fletcher's Land to out by Carby's, where James Robertson, yeah. And we tell you, we tell you later what happened after that. But yeah, so based on all our information, Dodos was not adopted. That is our lies, you know, he's a biological son of Jim Brown. Yes. Jim Brown's mother wasn't tall. She was a, um she wasn't Dodos and her is pretty much on the same height, based on what um Daddy B is saying. Cause he knew her. So Dodos was not adopted son, so all of that is just lie and blasphemous. He's one of Dud um Jim Brown baby mother that said it. And then people is comparing his face, um, his face, um, the face and all these things. Yeah, so you cannot be um, genetics. So if they want to really prove, say, you know, fee his son, and most of us as Jamaican know, a whole, a whole heap of man get jacket at Jamaica, and man raise the youth, them as still their youth. You understand? Because far, you understand? You have some women still doing at Jamaica, yeah, we have kids. And yeah, them we even them give you the wrong man, the kid and them thing there. And and the man who want the best see child, you know. And you know the wicked woman, she will do everything for this child, the same you child the the same child. Cause she won't forget at the man. I just saw some woman stay. Jamaican woman, woman. Them just evil. You understand? So just like how people I say, uh, say, you know, say, um, say do the son of Jim Brown's son. But yet still, Jim Brown, who only man says, my son. So, oh, you know, some people that say, no, oh, is that a problem to others? You understand? If you never go there, if you never go there, you name on a call. You know, so it's really, yeah, it's really distasteful for people really going down that road. And I try to um, denigrate, denigrate the man and him father legacy and him father honor. You know, you understand? So I just say, God. But that's the life of the quirks. But the father, you know, Jim Brown wasn't a bad man. I shot them, shot him. CMP and P them in a rose town shot him. Shot bye bye. And I saw him become a bad man. And I labor right here with me. So apparently, although he was living in Rose Town, he wasn't he never seen himself as a political activist, but based on him philosophy, the man he not believe in a rabbin and all them things there. You understand? So that's why I'm based on him rhetoric. Them say, boy, he's my labor right. He's more for Siaga than for Michael, because at the time, the man, he might get a whole bike and all them things, and he might get none, but he's not want none. You understand? So that's what they use, licky licky and likes, and you understand? But, you know, hey, look, whether, you know, whether he's Jim Brown, biological son or not, you know, from the man put him name on the bird surf ticket and say, his son, I is. So who are these people or others to say why for discredit him and them thing there? And that's why you know, I leave it in on. So them I say, hey, boy, you look like look like Jim Brown and them thing there. Hey look, you know how many children in a Jamaica are in this world look like the father. And when them the DNA is not the father. So I know looks do it and them thing there. Because we as a people, no for the majority of Jamaican people ignorant, you know. Especially the low IQ people them. You understand? So if you enjoy the video and you know to you hear it now for yourself say, do this and this man, yes, you're going to hear him later on, you know. You're going to hear him real voice. You know, we'll play it and we're gonna make you hear some things where things we never hear before. You understand? Because this importation of gun and when they might blame one side, you're going to hear who bring in the M sixteens them and the, and who bring in the M fours. You understand? So this is a man where Go way back, but you know, as a elder man, no one thing there. 
the man that changed them life and you understand. And we do believe in our redemption. Yeah, so and thanks to all of the people them we share them you know, them life journey with us and you understand. Some people want it to be heard, some people don't. So we have to you understand, we have to respect people. Cause I just saw it go on them thing there. Yeah, so have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.